Coming up, a special new thank you gift from Splitting Slices, a new knife from a company called Tesseract, and these knives have seen action, historical blades from my brother. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. The show, uh, one of my favorite comments from this past week was about the word tesseract, as you just heard in the opener. Salvador Dali did a crucifixion represented in a tesseract shape. And a tesseract is a is a four dimensional cube. And so uh, Salvador Dali uh, did a did a picture of that. Uh, We were talking about uh, the tesseract. Uh, during Thursday Night Knives two weeks ago, and um, I was wondering what the shape was, and then we looked it up, and and uh, so thank you very much, uh, Marcus G503, much appreciated. Another favorite comment was about the Lynn Thompson uh, Cold Steel uh, interview. We get a, still get a lot of views and comments on that one. Uh, APOP4RC says, Lynn made Cold Steel, in many ways, the ultimate knife manufacturer. Couldn't agree more. Uh, with wild and creative enough stuff to get people excited and curious about knives, and serious enough stuff to keep people as customers long term. What a fun company! <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I got to agree with you, AP. Fun is a, a great way to describe Cold Steel, uh, among many other adjectives. Fun uh, keeps rising to the top because they challenge us with cool new designs. They excite us with historical uh, designs that we all want combat versions of. And uh, they just keep coming year after year. So uh, thanks one and all for the comments and the views. Uh, Greatly appreciated. And uh, we're excited to bring you more and more content every week. All of that said, let us do get to a pocket check. In my pocket today was the Microtech Stitch. I've really had a hard time uh, bumping this one from my pocket. Uh, this is the Microtech Stitch Ramlock with the aluminum handle. Now, I had this uh, without the serrations uh, in the house not too long ago when uh, it was on loan from Jock's Knife, a uh, good buddy across the shock. And I remember saying, oh, it's great to experience this knife and to have it and to know that I don't need to go get it. Because uh, that handled that cutting edge to handle ratio, blah, blah, blah. And then I couldn't get it out of my mind. And part of that was due to the fact that my good buddy Dave, this old sword blade reviews, sent me a um, just a fun little, uh, well, uh, what are you going to call it? A fugazi of an automatic version of a stitch. So I had a chance to hold it in hand again and got got hooked. And so um, eventually got this. I've been carrying this a lot. I got this in the amphibian right around the same time. On paper, the amphibian is way more my style of knife, but I've just been carrying this one more. I absolutely love it. And that blade is wickedly sharp. And I have a feeling those serrations are really going to go to the distance, especially considering I hardly use my knives. All right, next up, uh, this is from Jack Wolf Knives. I'm you know, I carry Jack Wolf knives all the time. I'm one of the lucky ones who who gets a new one every time it comes out, thanks to the generosity of Ben Belkin. And and also, he knows what he's doing. He gets it in the hands of people who really love his work. And uh, we can't help but uh, blather on about how awesome his knives are. Just so happens, uh, he's got a sale going on, or or uh, Jack Wolf knives has a sale going on in the month of April uh, in lieu of a drop. They've got some of these actually available. This is the Midnight Jack, uh, probably, uh, well, in the top three of the slip joints and definitely in the top two of the uh, front flippers because the After Hours Jack is like a sized up version of this. Absolutely love that sheep's foot blade, that deep hollow grind, and the, what do you call it, Um, that satin finish. Yeah, they got, uh, so if you're interested in these knives and think that they're overpriced or they're out of reach, go check them out now. They're 20% off. And, uh, this, this was something I just got from an email sent to me. So, uh, this is not a, a paid advertisement. Uh, would that it were no, actually it is paid in all these awesome Jack Wolf knives I've gotten. So, uh, go check that out. I think they have, uh, uh, also they have the, 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 what do you call it? The, 
Sharpshooter Jack, not the gunslinger, and they have the uh, the uh, little bro, the boy's knife. Uh, probably my favorite size of slip joint. All right, next up uh, on my waistband, I had the MR1 from TKL Knives. I, I got to say, all these amazing fixed blade knives I have, I keep coming back to the MR1 and the Night Stalker because of how easily they ride on the belt with that awesome sheath. Uh, that is why... I designed my collaboration knife with TKL knives to fit exactly in that profile because I love it. I love how it fits. It's the perfect size. And then with his super low profile sheaths and a discrete carry concepts clip, wearing this scout style up front, uh, right in front of my belt buckle is just the most comfortable way, seriously, the most comfortable way, but also the most accessible way. Uh, for me to carry a fixed blade these days. I know people love pocket carry. There are lots of cool pocket carry options. Actually, I have a new one coming to me real soon. It's pocket carry uh, fixed blade tactical. That's awesome. I can't wait to show it off to you guys uh, from a new company. Uh, but uh, this, uh, this belt carry, I'm just hooked on. And I've been, um, well, with this, I had the, uh, the, I had a lot of sort of straight edge blades, so I went for straight edge again. And this one, uh, Pical, just because this was on me for a self-defense knife today. So uh, a, a discreet package, perfectly sized, uh, really nicely aligned ring. On the, end of, on the end of that pommel, excuse me, allows you to make a real tight fist without altering your grip. Also, uh, with the with the spring and the lighter clothes coming out, I got the Arnie back out, put it on a NATO band, though. Uh, that rubber strap was starting to bug out, uh, bug my hairy wrist. But uh, I love this knife. Uh, I mean, love this watch. It's so tall that when I have a lot of uh, layers on in the winter, I tend not to wear it. All right. Last up on me today for emotional support was the awesome Pony Stout. Uh, this is by Devo Knives, our good friend Colin Maison-Pierre. And Kevin Johnson of Lefty EDC, their company, Devo Knives. Devo because they're divas, but male. So Devo's about certain things like detent and other things. Uh, but what a beautiful, beautiful knife. Uh, I, I really love this pony stout. I'm not sure about the stout, the full size. I haven't experienced that. I'm sure it's awesome. But for me, this, this uh, small size is perfect because... Uh, the, the regular stout is in that medium size category that I tend not to carry as much. I tend to go for the larger knives and the smaller knives. And this is about a three inch or so it's, uh, it's perfect size for the back pocket. Deep hollow grind, uh, is very, very efficient, uh, for cutting. You got that nice low tip, um, and a really cool design. That blade I think is very, very, uh, fetching. Look at that. Gorgeous, gorgeous knife. Uh, so this is uh, has contoured G10. I'm not sure if these are available right now. I, th I think the Pony Stouts, they tend to, to have because they're uh, not as premium as their premium knives, obviously, which, which uh, are more um, drop-based, if I'm correct. I don't know. Go to DevoKnives.com and check it out. All right, this is what I had on me today, the incredible Ramlock Stitch. I had the beautiful and classy uh um midnight jack i'm sorry yeah midnight jack from jack wolf knives i had the mr1 a tactical knife created for a marine raider unit uh by tkl knives and then the devo stout what did you have on you let me know drop it in the comments below I always love the inspiration of that all right i just wanted to thank my good friend byron kennedy he's got a channel called split and slices i'm going to put this uh, sticker so you can see i love it pizza i mean pizza and knives just about my two favorite things in the entire world uh, well let's start let's let's go like this uh you know god and family uh knives pizza right that's pretty much how it works split and slices look at that i love that big k-bar hatchet uh, cutting up that beautiful looking pie uh, looks like that pizza, by the way, has uh, pieces of prosciutto on it, which I really like, kind of getting crispy around the edges. Anyway, Byron, um, known to all of us, started his own channel, and it's awesome. Uh, so I, I love his shorts. Uh, I see them, well, I see them whenever they're posted. And it's so cool to, at long last, have a voice and a face 
to a name, uh, a generous and fun name who's always a part of the chats uh, at Thursday Night Knives. Anyway, I um, when he I heard he was starting up a channel. Of course, I have the good fortune of having a channel for a little while, so I get knives coming in and um, knives given to me, and um, you know I have a lot of knives. So I gifted some to to Byron to put up to feature on his channel, and you know. Uh, he thanked me with such an incredible gift. Uh, me and my wife, I got to say. I got a package uh, from Byron and his wife as a thank you for those knives and for the support. And I can't believe how generous he was. But you got to check this out. First, before I get to this, I have to say they put in a beautiful pink bandana, some uh, European chocolates, uh, I think from Belgium, and um, and this really nice uh, perfume sample that my wife is now wearing all the time that smells really good. Uh, even my daughters have been walking around in her wake. What smells so good? And uh, but look at what he got me. A Victorinox Swiss Army 2. Swiss Army 2. This one is hard to find. And I think and I, I need uh, I need to corroborate with uh, with Byron. But I think he got this in Europe on a recent tour because this is a very hard knife to find. And I do know in uh, like in Cologne, for instance, there's a Victorinox store where you can go in and custom build a knife or buy knives that you can't really get here in the States. So look at this. This is a Swiss Army II. It's one of the 93 millimeter ALOX models, and it has a single spring like the Swiss Army one. However, it's got two tools. So it's got the usual big blade, which Byron, thank you so much for this. Look on one side, Bob DeMarco, it says. On the reverse side, the knife junkie, it says. Thank you so much, Byron. This is such a classy thank you gift. Totally unnecessary, but so appreciated. I'm so glad you did. You didn't have to, but I'm so glad you did, as they say. And then this. It's got that really cool hawk build pruning knife. Of course, that's the reason I've been pining for this knife and somewhat publicly for a little while since I got the Swiss Army one. And uh, I got to say, Byron, you listen, you must, that must make you a very good husband. I got to say, you listen, you knew, and uh, you got this for me. I really appreciate it. I, I wish all the luck to, to you and your wife, who seems lovely, and uh, aw your awesome channel, Split and Slices. So please, uh, please continue with the success. And thank you so much for this beautiful, beautiful gift. I will it will never obviously leave the collection, but I have a feeling it's not going to leave the pocket uh, for quite some time. All right. Uh, still to come, we're going to have uh, Knife Life news, and then we're going to look at the state of the collection, get to our main topic. But before we do, I just want to say, uh, if you feel like supporting the show, if you think what we do here is valuable and you want to uh, sling us some ducats, as they say, or as I say, go to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check out what you would get in return. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Lawn Humphrey Blacktail, built in his shop in the woods of Ohio, these blades are forged from 5200 tool steel. It's an excellent size with killer good looks and a spread of eye-catching handles to choose from. Murray Carter and his highly skilled apprentices make some of the sharpest knives you'll ever find, forging them by hand from laminated Sanmai steel. There's a new batch in stock, but they won't last long, and the Copus Elvia is a lightweight, discreet field knife that weighs just 1.95 ounces in the sheath. It's made in the USA, and it never stays in stock for long. Get these deals and other great specials from Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash knivesshipfree. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Well, if you didn't hit... Uh skip forward 30 seconds uh twice over this past minute you saw the first item of interest here in knife life news and that is the new copus designs elvia and uh so uh you know knife ship free has been the exclusive um dealer or uh, a carrier of the copus designs elvia now the copus designs elvia is a collaboration between Copus Designs, who does a lot of uh, cool little uh, defense knives and also defense things like nux and uh, shivs and different cool stuff. They do a lot of 
really interesting design, like non knife things that you can see at their table at Blade Show. Uh, but now they have the Elvia out with that thumb scoop, and this is not totally new to them, but it just so happens I have one in house. Uh, this is on loan from Jock's Knife. He just bought one of these from this very drop we're talking about, and uh, this is this is the uh, Copus Designs Elvia. And if you notice, well, <clears throat> I'll show it with my Elvia actually. Um, so they've, they've made a few changes here. The, the sheath is slightly different, a little less of a scoop. That scoop is if you don't have a clip on it, you drop it in the pocket, uh, just loose like this. When you pull it out, you can hook this on the inside of your pocket and draw the knife. So here is the knife. And man, no denying, it just looks super cool with that thumb swale on the back. The, this is a uh, Picall style self-defense knife, no doubt. Uh, but it is... Uh, also, a really good utility knife, and that and that thumb swale uh, really helps. Just for reference, this is the original. It is the same width, uh, 154 cm blade steel, and the same width FRN handle. Mine just has a uh, Sukamaki wrap on it from uh, from uh, Bright for War knives right there. But just an example of the difference. Okay, so 154 cm injection molded handle FRN. Uh, Ed Calderon, of course, is the uh, collaborator. You can just see it's the same thing with a little. Uh, it's like they touched the back of this one with a contact wheel and took some out. Really, really nice. Um, the thing about this is with the sheath, two ounces. That is two ounces of some of the gnarliest self-defense you're going to find. And then you wrap that with jute cord or you do a sukamaki wrap like I just had. But add a little bit of width, a little bit of grip. And it's even sure in hand and more, uh, more of an EDC, less of a of a um, what do you call it, undercover kind of knife. But uh, if you want to keep it nice and slim and light, there you go. Uh, so it's not usual; it's not a frequent thing that for a knife life news story, I have the knife to show uh, that we're talking about. So actually, it's going to happen. Lightning is striking twice because the next story. This is a very exciting one. A, a new knife from the Tactile Knife Company. You know Tactile Knife. Uh, they sprouted out of Tactile Turn, pen company. Tactile Knife uh, debuted with the Rockwall. Awesome flipper. And then they followed that up with the Bear, um, also named after uh, Texas County. And the Bear is a uh, clip point slip joint and a, a great knife. And then they followed on with a lot of other knives, some collaborations with Christensen Blade Works and Richard Rogers and this is the newest one. You know, the tactile knife, all made in Dallas, all made in the same spot. A couple of things they have to go down the street to get, but everything Texas made, everything USA made can get pricey. However, they are releasing this, the Chupacabra. And the Chupacabra is their first attempt at, no, I shouldn't say attempt. This is their first uh, less, uh, more affordable knife. This is coming in at $187, and uh, it is worth it. I mean, if you get rid of the entire thing and just keep the, the blade, that is worth the $187. Uh, it is magna cut and exquisitely ground. It is a super thin. I've been, so I've had this knife uh, for about four days now, and I have been zipping. Through, I've been doing everything around the house with this knife. I've been carrying it as a full-time EDC. Uh, today was kind of the first day knocking it out of the pocket as an EDC, but it is really, really a great blade. And it's got some sub substantial blade stock, but that full, nearly full height hollow grind comes to a like a almost a zero edge and then knock back with that relief edge. It is something else. But what makes it affordable is that aluminum body. It's got steel liners and aluminum body. And yes, it's got the super lock from snex the super you know snex tan he's a uh an indonesian knife maker who or malaysian knife maker who has cataloged a lot of his um, knife making pursuits and investigations on instagram i'm a big fan of his work here uh Civivi did a version of his knife uh in the vision using that same lock so the lock you lift up and it pulls out of a notch in the blade and there it just drops super super smooth 
Uh, so that's a 3.3 inch Magna Cut sheep's foot blade with a little bit of belly. I love that blade and I love the sharpening notch or, you know, the way the edge terminates. Uh, Jared Neve would approve. Uh, it's got an aluminum handle, which keeps the cost down. But that super lock by Snex 10 uh, makes it ambidextrous, as does the pocket clip. And makes it unique and fidgety i gotta say uh if you use the thumb there's enough uh ricasso there to drop on the finger and close this thing is super smooth this drops tomorrow by the way this drops tomorrow april 11th thursday april 11th so get ready and look the pommel if you care is perfect for a reverse grip perfect just hook the thumb over the top of that pommel and you're going into whatever you're you're thrusting into. What a great knife. I'm a, I'm a, I'm loving this thing so far. Uh and this is the first time I've been able to mention it. So very excited about this knife. Go check it out. Uh all made in Dallas, all made in Texas, uh 100% designed in house and uh, uh licensed Snacks Superlock all for under $200. That is a steal and a half. If you ever like have a um not craving, but a, a real desire to support Amer an American maker, and it's out of reach, this is becoming within reach. This is something you can save up for. Um, <clears throat> many of us can save up for. I can't speak for everyone, but check it out. I'm excited about that knife. Okay, uh, next up, this is a cool one from Kambu. Uh, Kambu has been on the show a couple of times here. He's an awesome dude, uh, a Polish designer, and he works exclusively for Best Tech and has made, uh, you know, has created their whole boot, uh, bouquet line, but also a lot of big, chunky, tactical, uh, gorgeously sculpted designs and knives here. Well, this new one is called the Serif, and... Uh, Look at that thing. Man, it is unique. So a lot of his knives have uh, a sort of organic feel. This one has sort of a tech feel to it um, with the angles and the lines and the barely perceivable pocket clip, the way it blends in with all the milling and the and the lines. Uh, 3.66 inches of M390. Of course, that beautiful clip point blade. I'm a sucker for a clip. And you have that sort of bullet-shaped bullet contoured uh, fuller for opening and also for lighting, uh, lightening the blade and rigidity. Uh, it is a flipper oversized uh, pivot collar is very, you know, that's, that's kind of the central point of the whole, whole knife. Very cool and stylized titanium handle, heavily sculpted. Uh, and this will be available soon in air quotes. I don't know what soon means to best tech, but I've, I have a feeling soon means in the next couple of months i mean they uh or or definitely before blade show they seem to move pretty quickly on knives speaking of a company that moves quickly on knives the last uh in our knife life news stories today civivi has a new one and it's in keeping with their uh their new naming um convention uh like the the this one is called the Civivi Star Flare. Um, so kind of a, a compound word having to do with astronomy. We've been seeing that a bit um, with Sencut and Civivi. Uh, this is a 3.2 inch Nitro V um, worn cliff. I got to say, uh, that is a pretty knife. That is a really pretty knife. Of course, I love the way they always incorporate the C, the branding. Is very discreet right on the pivot. And then any markings on the blade are microscopic for this 52-year-old man to read. Uh, and I prefer that. So they always look very, um, what do you, what's the word people use? Uh, not clean, but um, not generic, but, um, well, you know what I'm saying. No markings, no billboarding. I love it. Aluminum body. Uh, it's got that these lines that carry, uh, milled lines that carry through the grip onto the knife i like that kind of that sort of thing i don't have that on many blades but kombu the last designer we were talking about uh, does that in spades kind of continues lines and milled um flourishes from the handle into the blade this has that and a button lock of course i'm i, I love aluminum handles um one concern might be how far back that uh, finger choil is from the edge of the blade but presumably that that little uh, hump uh, under the pivot is comfortable enough 
for your fingers, uh, for your forefinger to land on and to rest on as you do the light work you're going to do with this 3.2 inch blade. This is 3.45 ounces, which at first I thought, oh, that's nice and light. But for a small knife like this, eh, that's, that's not that light. Available next month. That's May 2024. That's the Civivi Star Flare. Do check it out. It's a classy, classy little warning. All right, coming up, state of the collection. We're going to see some knives. My brother got me because uh, uh, I visited uh, home and got to see, uh, got got a couple of gifts from the past couple of holidays and birthdays and stuff from him. And then we're going to move on to a whole category of the amazing historical stuff. Uh, knives my brother's got me. Coming up on the Knife Chunky Podcast. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, thenifejunkie.com slash shockwave. So uh, this first one is a Kissing Cranes Stiletto. It's not an automatic, uh, but it, it's a very, very stout and nicely built stiletto-style knife. Kissing Cranes uh, out of Deutschland, I believe. Rostfrei, it says on there. Uh, now, this is something my brother got from a leather show. And when he says leather show, he actually means gun show. That's just code. He does a lot of leather crafting. Um, but when he wants to go spend money on something uh, that maybe he doesn't want his wife to know about, he says leather show. So that's code. Sorry, I just blew your code, Vic. But uh, code for leather show is night is gun show, and and that's where he got this. A beautiful four and a quarter inch crisp blade that fits into this beautiful stag handle. From all accounts, this seems to be real stag to me. Um, it's uneven and weird. And when you look at it from the sides, you, you see the pores. Uh, I think this is real. And if it's not, it'll do to the real thing gets here. It feels more like stag than stagalon, that's for sure. And it's all uneven and weird. It doesn't seem mass produced. Uh, this one is a back lock. Most of the knives I know in this configuration are bolster locks. So you just slide the bolster down. Um, but in this case, it's a backlock, which is way sturdier in, in my estimation. And a really nicely sharpened crisp blade. You've got three humps for the cutting. One, two, three. And then an upturned, upswept tip. In the Filipino um, application and the, and the um, Malaysian and Indonesian application of the crisp, it's actually presented with that tip down. So you get that snagging uh, sort of hawkbill effect from the tip of the blade uh, but this is sort of more of an italian western style stiletto with the wavy flamberge blade i guess it's more of a french style blade than it is a filipino blade but it still has those waves and everyone knows whether you're french or filipino those waves are like big serrations and they're so they they cut on uh, they they widen a wound channel going in and they're also nasty on a slash so to me, this is kind of a gangster's knife. This is, this will fit in the classy assassin category for me. Uh, you know, uh, back of the head or um, you know, uh, liver shot with this, and then you keep walking through the crowd. Uh, that's what this is all about. So thank you, Vito. I love this thing. Uh, those are not brass liners. Those some sort of metal, <laughs> probably steel, uh, with a kind of a cheesy anodization on it. But I don't mind that. The rest of the knife is so high quality, and none of that anodization or coloring, whatever it is, coating has worn off. And it seems to be a knife that has been around the block a bit. So thank you, Vic. I love that thing. It is awesome. Next up, from the company we were talking about earlier, uh, when we were talking about Salvador Dali, uh, that's the Tesseract. This thing is so cool. So Tesseract reached out to me, Tesseract Tactical. Uh, they are a Kansas City-based company, uh, a, a consortium of designers, <clears throat> you know, designers with their fine eye and their cool clothes and their um, awesome mid-century modern furniture. Uh, they designed this knife and had it produced. And I don't know where they had it produced, but if I had to guess, I would say they had it produced by Kaiser. Uh, this is obviously an OEM knife. This was not made in Kansas. It was designed there in Kansas City, designed there and um, uh, 
um, engineered their labored over there um, in many ways. Uh, but but the knife itself was OEM'd somewhere. And I swear, uh, just from my experience, it feels like a Kaiser. It is buttery smooth. I mean, the action is incredible. And there is no, as uh, Metal Complex would say, double clutch. As soon as you um, release the lock, it is smooth all the way down. There's no secondary bump up onto the tang of the blade uh, for that detent ball. Um that's S35VN and a very nice sheep's foot blade with a belly. Uh, this thing is super keen, super duper sharp. Here, let me get rid of this. Super duper sharp. And uh, if you will please forgive the term. And then look at this. The handle is great. I mean, uh, the liners, I believe, are stainless. Um and there's no weight reduction in there, so it gives it a real solid feel, uh, but not overly heavy. Um, you've got jimping all the way down as far as my thumb can reach, which is very, very, very welcome, not only for my thumb, but also my forefinger uh, in that sort of utility grip, which, which is definitely where this knife accelerates, uh, not only in the blade, but in the grip. Look at that. This is excellent for that. Uh, on the handle, you've got uh, nice thick liners, and though there is no cutout for the lock bar at all, it easily disengages with the way it's cut out, with the, that slot cut out there. So very easy disengagement, really nice flip, great drop shot action, um, a sturdy peel ply uh, black G10, and then you turn it on its side, and it's got orange liners. It's so it's it's just a little extra bit of of lux there and um so it looks nice and and then look at that totally um well, they have a cool tesseract uh logo there on the blade and then they have their marking there on the back stop or on the um back spacer and then you see that cool logo again at the tip of the clip which seems ambidextrous yes there's a a um a screw there and a screw on top you can take this off it's a symmetrical clip remove that screw and have it set up for lefty so this is a fully ambidextrous uh knife and also great opening on that opening hole <clears throat> so i'm gonna do a close-up video of this i've had i've had it for a couple of weeks now uh, brought it with me on my recent trip had a chance to use it a lot and uh i love it what have i what did i use it for mostly for food. I was helping my mom uh, sous chef a little bit in the kitchen or whatever she'll allow. She's very fussy in the kitchen. I don't like how you do it. I don't like how you wash dishes. You get water on the floor, this kind of thing. I'm like, yeah, but I could help you. You wouldn't have to be in here till nine o'clock. I don't like how you do it, she says, but she will let me cut stuff because she knows how much I love knives. So I did use this. Uh, great for vegetables. Not what you're probably going to use it for, but this tes Tesseract NF1 is a really cool and impressive knife. So do go check them out. Uh, I believe these are on sale, uh, not on sale, but are now um, up for sale <laughs> on their website. When I got it, they weren't, and now they are. Tesseract NF1. All right, next up, uh, this one is on loan uh, from from Jock's Knife. I'm a, I'm a knife mule for Jock's Knife, and <laughs> before I send it along to him, I get a chance to live with it and check it out. I never carry the knives that are uh, drop shipped to me or on loan to me uh, from my mule clients. Uh, but I do get to check them out. And uh, this is the new Turner CNC Elvia V2. This is the large one. And I'm showing you it in the sheath because you can see it looks like a dagger sheath. But that's only because this is a fully ambidextrous sheath, which is so sweet. You just pop this in your in your. Uh, where, wherever you want it, left side, right side, three o'clock, nine o'clock, right, right appendix, whatever it is. Uh, and no matter where you put it, it's this, this funky shaped knife is going to go in either way. So this is the large version of the Elvia and man alive. Is it ever sweet? Um, really nicely, thinly hollow ground M390 with a wicked, wicked tip. And of course, it's that fruit knife setup. So uh, yeah, you can use it for all sorts of EDC chores um, and such. But really, it's intended as a self-defense weapon in this Pakal style grip with the tip down and the edge in. You get this wicked animalistic clawing style motion. 
if if you will, way more cannibalist, or not cannibalistic, animalistic than uh, the karambit, which faces outward and requires a weird different motion uh, that requires a lot of training. The Pakal style really just requires you have that sort of uh, adrenaline pumping and, and that your joints all work and you can grip the knife. If you can slash it into someone and pull, uh, this knife will work for you. Uh, a cool thing about <clears throat> um, Turner CNC is his close affiliation with Ed Calderon. Uh, Ed Calderon uh, is, is the, um, again, the collaborator on this as he was on the Copus Designs um, Elvia. This one here, um, you can, since uh, Ed Calderon is not only into, you know, knife fighting, but uh, he's into all sorts of different urban survival things, including how do you how do you escape a kidnapping? How do you survive in a hostile urban environment uh, with only a few little everyday uh, items? So this knife, you can remove those scales with one of the two pennies they send you because those screws are... Uh, are meant to be uh, unscrewed with pennies and you can stash goods inside the handle. So very, very cool. Excellent uh, clip, excellent sheath, really amazing knife. So an exciting, an exciting knife. Well, since I already showed you the Elvia, I won't, uh, I won't bother you with that. Uh, but uh, before we get to the, the main topic, I want to show you these knives. My brother has gotten me kind of shore, shore up the, mm, what am I trying to say? Uh, Try, try to show you where I am in my collection of cool knives my brother's gotten me so far, assuming he gets me more in the future. Uh, I do want to talk about these t-shirts. We have a cool new t-shirt this week. I'm sharp, just like my knife. And uh, check this out. This is another awesome design by Jim. Just go to thenifejunkie.com slash shop and you can see page after page of knife-themed t-shirts uh, designed by our one and only Jim. And they are awesome um, so go check them out. That's the knifejunkie.com slash shop. And remember, each week we have a featured T-shirt of the week. That means Jim is in his workshop busily, busily uh, designing and working on these every week uh, to bring to you. All right, let's get to this. Um, I'm going to go a little bit out of order, uh, actually, uh, since this was one. This is kind of like this, the end of the state of the collection. Eh, we'll, we'll stay in order. I don't want to get too bogged down because I have a lot of similar-ish knives here first one uh i got he got me for my brother got me for my 50th birthday uh at, uh and there was also a slip joint which is elsewhere he's given me a lot of other stuff new stuff but this is only historical blades uh mostly american this one is a usmc mark ii otherwise kind of generically known as a k-bar this one is a camillus and was used was issued to the navy so you can see that usn right there on the tang uh and then you flip it over and if you can let's see if we can get through the rust there's a little bit of red rust there you'll see camillus new york all right uh so stacked leather handle this one has a sharpened swedge and a dull tip uh so kind of a menacing knife i mean this was uh one of the ones from uh, the the World War II uh, end of World War II or Korea era um, that had still had the sharpened swedge and was known as a fighting knife, fighting utility knife, but fighting coming first. On the sheath, you can see the gentleman who owned this carved a feather. I love that. I love the personalized touches on these sheaths. You'll you'll see over and over. So uh, I don't know what the story is. Who can know what the story is for this knife? Uh, but it obviously got a lot of use, probably during conflict. And I don't know if that means fighting, but probably opening crates and such, uh, whatever you're going to use, digging, whatever you're going to use your uh, tools for in that moment. But also the, the fact that it had that, that fighting tip on it. Um, I don't know. I, I got to say, all of these knives, I can say this for who knows what they went through? And that's part of what I love about collecting historical knives is that they they saw things long before I was born. And who knows what those things are? So this is the first of two K-bars I'll be showing you that my brother got me. All right. So the next one I got um, on my recent trip home for Easter. And I saw my brother and he's kind of given me 
gifts that he hadn't had a chance to give me over the past year. This one, that's a sheath that he made. I just wanted to show off his beautiful leather work. That's his maker's mark there. Um, but this, he got at a Civil War show. And you probably saw some of the shorts with it, but look at this thing. It, it looks like a swashbuckler to me. I mean, that is one hell of a Bowie. Look at the tip of that. Uh, it has, if you're just listening, it has a relatively straight edge with a, with a very slight billy towards a very low tip. And then it has an extreme dropping. And by the way, that's sharpened uh, as much as the, these are two apple seed edges, an extreme clip going down. Uh, it's it's like a hawk bill at the end of the blade. Uh, I surmise that I don't know how old this is, but if you look closely at the pitting on the blade, it seems pretty old. It is a chunk of steel here. Like I said, sharpen swedge, sharpen apple seed edge. I wouldn't I wouldn't sharpen this up, but uh, if you swung hard, you could hurt someone with it for sure. Um, look at those quillions, one facing down, one facing up, and what seems to be a walnut handle with. Uh, seven pins in it six pins in it sorry but just looking at the quillions and that blade i i'm pretty sure that that is a confederate or southern style bowie knife uh, and the only reason i say that is because uh, those quillions remind me of what i have uh, of the quillions i've seen on um, legitimate confed or, or, or known to be confederate bowies so that, that one up, that one down, uh, little nodes on the end, and then that blade shape. The only thing I've seen close to that um, in, in historical knives uh, are Confederate. Uh, so that's what I'm going on. And like I said, my brother got this at a Civil War memorabilia show, otherwise known as a leather show. <laughs> and uh, so I, I'm, I don't know. It seems very old, and it seems from the south from what i can tell and look at that handle very very much a working handle so this thing i'm going to go to the main camera here for a second just to show you how i mean this thing, this thing is totally menacing uh modern day version of this i would say the uh, off-grid cayman uh, has a similar vibe to that sort of scimitar style bowie blade so thank you Vito. i love this thing and a crazy cool sheath he is very, very good with leather. If only he'd apply himself and quit his job and do leather full time. Okay, next up is the is a USMC medical corpsman's knife. And this thing is insane. I mean, let me show you the, I'll show you the blade and then we'll talk about the sheath. Look at the blade on this thing. First of all, there's a big D lamb running, running down here. Um, but a big heavy quarter inch spade shaped slab i i guess it's for uh i don't know amputating i don't know what you would what a medical corpsman would use this giant heavy uh tipless blade for obviously that front with the swedge could be used as a shovel for digging uh this is definitely a multi uh use tool a heavy walnut handle i mean this whole thing is super heavy and then that giant sheath with the with the metal shape and the super thick uh leather weighs a lot this is let me just say we are not descended from weak men here this is something that someone had to carry this sergeant wh harding uh carried on the daily no doubt whether on his belt or on his pack it was weight it was a lot of weight in addition to a heavy canvas uniform and uh a heavy uh, medical pack and i don't know if they carried a sidearm but all the other stuff he had to carry this giant knife on him so a pretty amazing tooling work sergeant wh harding and the funny thing is is you know uh my brother-in-law was in the marine corps and he says everything gets stolen so everyone's labeling everything and that's a beautiful job of labeling uh, on the back side you see 1976 <laughs> and then some some very not not as well done uh scratching looks like a kid uh probably the grandson of w h harding uh, got this and put his own name in there um on the back side of the sheath 
uh, just a really uh, amazing and 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 special piece here, not only because it's a piece of history and o- only heaven knows what it saw, but um, but all the personalization um, on it is pretty cool. Also, it's got this old leather fob. I don't know how old that is. Probably from 1976. I can't imagine that would have lasted since uh, World War II. This thing is heavy. Holy mackerel. This is like at least three pounds. So imagine that pulling your pants down. Uh, Again, strong, stout-hearted men carried that. Next up, a Fairbairn Sykes commando knife. Uh, This is the, the... Fairbairn Sykes, the um, very famous dagger carried by commandos for, um, well, for killing uh, the enemy. That's all this thing is good for, really. Um, there are some of the markings there. Um, people, Fairbairn Sykes people will know what that means. Uh, you can see how this was manufactured um, kind of cheaply, um, this one in particular. I've seen others that are more fancy. Uh, this one seems like it was uh, just pressed for action. Like some that I've seen, it has a slightly bent blade. It's very sharp on the edge, zero ground down to the edges. So this is a good slasher and obviously quite, quite pointy. Uh, I saw a great video. You can YouTube this. Uh, you can search this on YouTube. Within, uh, it was a video taken probably in the 90s in a museum with an old timer, SAS guy with a with a, a beret on. And he was talking about using this knife. And he he said two things. First of all, when you took out a, a sentry, you didn't stab this in the back of his head or slice his throat. You stabbed it into his throat and then punched forward. Nasty bit of business, he says. And then the other thing was, is that you didn't really, according to him, and he seems to know, um, you didn't really thrust with it. You held it to your body, grabbed the guy and pulled him into it. I mean, that's what that's what he described. And he seemed to know. Now, this little tether here is just so it hangs on the wall behind me. Uh, but this was one of a couple of lifelong grail knives that my brother and I had. And he is a generous and amazing man and bought it for me and didn't keep it for himself. It has a uh, really cool but old kind of falling apart sheath um, that they made that were uh, kind of optimized for sewing snugly to the body on on um, uniforms or boots and other other uh, such stuff okay next up this is one that i just got from him and it's wearing a brand new sheath uh, that he got uh, aftermarket very nice leather sheath but this is another camillus um, mark uh, usmc mark ii um, and i'm not sure who this was used by and i gotta say um well, a couple of things here uh the handle has been sort of restored it is a stacked leather handle it's been uh, nourished and polished and all that uh, or maintained over the years. And uh, the blade itself has been stripped of its bluing or parkerization. I think it was parkerization. But this is also an old one. It's got that sharpened swedge. Uh, so definitely a, uh, a focus on this being a weapon as the new uh, K-bars do not have that. <clears throat> you can see the uh, Camillus um, tang stamp. If it'll focus, there you go, Camillus, kind of lightly done. And then those Quillians, one up, one down, um, look factory done, I got to say. They don't look like someone pounded on it, but it could be. Um, how do you tell? Well, I don't know, it seems like there'd be more gapping if someone did it themselves, but uh, I am not sure. But I got to say, I like it. It reminds me of the M3 trench knife where you can uh, push forward on the Quillian with your thumb And then that bottom quillion wraps around the forefinger. So this was my Christmas gift, I guess, that we didn't, when I didn't see him this past Christmas. Um, So great, great K bar. Uh, Who doesn't love a K bar? I got a bunch of them now, uh, but most of them, none of them actually will I use. (laughs) So I need to get a run of the mill current day K bar so that I can take it outside and pretend to use it. Okay, next up. Uh, This one is the only non, um, well, no, there are two non-American knives in this, uh, but they were brought back by GIs after World War II. I'm going to focus on the hilt of this one. Uh, This is the Barong, uh, but this is a very special Barong uh, from the Moro tribe in southern Philippines. They are uh, Islamic 
uh, down there and wicked, wicked fighters. First of all, I'm going to show you this sheath, uh, which is a very typical and beautifully done uh, sheath. I have it wrapped in ceram wrap wrapping right now because um, this uh, this reed wrap is in need of repair and I just haven't gotten around to it, honestly. Uh, but I don't want it to fall off. Look at that beautifully engraved sheath there. And then here's the blade. It's got a bit of corrosion and rust on the edges, probably made from an old spring, wagon spring or um, leaf spring of some sort. Definitely, uh, this is an old one, World War II era at, at the very least. So I'm guessing that was a, a leaf spring or, or wagon spring. Uh, but the cool part here is that the hilt is, I haven't seen too many of these here. I'm going to change this. Is wrapped in a netting of wire. So it, it keeps the wood par portion of the blade not only uh, snugly fit in that ferrule, and I mean, it's, it's locked in there with some sort of natural gummy resin, uh, but this is a mechanical connection on the outside as opposed to a pin. And it's very rare. I, I haven't seen that too much at all. And I really like it. It not only adds, uh, uh, like I said, a mechanical connection. It's not just held. Uh, this handle isn't just held to the blade uh, with a with a gum, natural gum epoxy, but it's held on by those cape, those wires. But it also adds grip. And uh, as you can see, it places for your fingers to rest and for the palm of your hand to grip into. So I have no doubt that this was a, um, I don't know if it was used in combat, but this was definitely a warrior's knife. This was used, uh, or this was intended to be used in combat. Uh, no doubt about that. Uh, the thing about a lot of these uh, blades and Filipino uh, knives is that they're, um, they're multi-purpose. Um, they're used for agriculture, for everyday everything, but then also for fighting and killing. And the Moros were quite good at that. All right. This is their main, uh, one of their main swords, the leaf-shaped barong. Okay. Next up is, now this one is definitely old. Definitely old. But I'm not sure if it's a, a Fugazi or not. I'm not sure if it's a fake or not. Now, just ignore this wire. This is what keeps it on the wall. Uh, behind me but this is another one that my brother got me that <clears throat> is definitely based on a confederate style um bowie knife which which can be easily this style knife can be easily found and researched uh online it's got a very old bone handle uh with multiple pins and then uh brass sort of sunrise on the pommel and uh the uh, pre-guard there pre-guard portion of the handle and an extra long bottom quillion with that downward facing lobe and then a, a shorter upward facing quillion with the upward lobe. A beautiful long buoy with um, a hollow ground blade. And now it's labeled. Let's see if we can get it stamped. W.J. McElroy. And it says 1863. Now, uh, that's what leads me to believe that this is fake. Uh, and Macon, Georgia on this side. Um, I showed this to uh, a couple of people and got some got some conflicting answers. But I'm pretty sure that this is very old, but not actually uh, uh, W.J. McElroy uh, from Macon, Georgia. I just something something tells me it isn't because uh, I've seen examples of this online now and none of them are in shape like this. So um, whatever it is, I love it. It's super stout. It's full tang. It is old. Uh, so kind of an old Fugazi is kind of cool too uh, in, in its own way. Um, but I love uh, the style of the Confederate uh, buoys. A lot of them had that D guard. A lot of them have these uh, upward, downward S, S guard uh, lobed um, quillions here. And uh, that long clip is very, very fetching to me. Okay. Carefully placing this down. 
Okay, next up, this is a big, this is a big one. Again, this is something I, I it's hard to believe that this was a part of someone's kit, but it was. And uh, nicely embellished uh, leather here. You can see that. I don't know how this was done, but it wasn't standard uh, like that on a Collins machete. But this is a, another big, heavy slab of a knife uh, used in World War II. Um, World War One and World War II, I believe. Uh, this is a heavy walnut handle. This is a heavy look. Look at this. So, if this is a quarter inch thick, all the way down to this small apple seed edge. Everything, everything else is full width. Uh, this weighs about five pounds with the sheath, and this is for an engineer. This was an engineer's machete. Uh, so this was used to hack through a heavy brush. Um, and no doubt, if you if you were missing your Corman's knife, you could amputate with this. But this is not a fighting thing. I'm going to move this up here. Very definitely heavily influenced by Filipino blades, though. You can see that from that uh, very uh, extreme downward uh, swoop from the handle. That extreme angle down puts the edge way forward of the hand, kind of like a kukri, and uh, really allows for accelerated chopping. But man alive, you better be a, a colossus to be chopping with this for very long, because it is heavy. Again, as I mentioned before, we are not descended from weak men, and I'm sure uh, those who carried this were stronger than I in many ways. But um, I got to say, it is a heavy, heavy piece of kit. But you're going through the jungles of the of the Philippines and you need to build an air base. Well, this might be a very, very helpful tool. All right. Next up, also from the Philippines. Is this beautiful Chris here? I mean, there's the sheath. And then there is the blade. Filipino Chris is less wavy, has fewer waves and, and a less extreme um undulation to its wave uh than say a, a an indonesian or malaysian chris and then oftentimes has this long bit of downward facing straight up front beautiful pommel on this one uh this shape here for catching blades for mashing into people's faces uh and and some such this this jagged bit here uh, that is to emulate an elephant's uh proboscis this thing holds it on there can't remember what that's called and then all of these gnarly bits back here on the back side of the uh guard are for a catching blades and also uh, mashing into people's faces and just general pain uh, i always thought it was interesting how this back portion of the guard angles down uh, because if you don't know what you're doing you're likely to hurt your wrist with this uh, but not if you train in Kali, I guess. Uh, very nice hooked pommel here. Beautiful hardwood and then wrapped in jute cord. Or presumably, I don't know what kind of cord that is, actually. Speaking out of school. All of it held in with some sort of gummy, natural, uh, tree-like epoxy uh, resin in there. And um, I'm going to go to the main camera here just to show you like the 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 curves of these blades are no joke. Uh, those are not there just to look cool or to be spiritual. I know there's a uh, connection to rivers and snakes and stuff, uh, but really that that is meant for uh, um, accelerated cutting on the thrust, that widening open, and then accelerated cutting on a slash because it's like a big serrated downward hooked knife. So... Um, this was one that my brother saw me admire in his man cave. My brother's got the ultimate man cave. And uh, this was in there. And I was like, you don't collect Filipino blades. And so uh, he gave it to me. <laughs> that's, that's how cool he is. All right. Uh, second to last here. One of my favorites. Hangs on the wall next to me. I'm always busting it out. This is the Western W49 buoy. And this sucker he got at a um, pawn shop somewhere in ohio and it's got this weird bone handle i say weird because i don't i can't tell what kind of bone it is it's sort of yellowed and um my dark imagination takes me to places 
but so anonymous bone handle, downward pounded brass quillion. These quillions are super tough. I tried to pound it back and didn't want to mar mar this. So I've just kind of left it as is. Uh, but someone pounded that down. I imagine a biker owned this. I don't know why, but like a biker gang, biker guy uh, owned this. And he pounded that quillion down just for a little bit of extra protection when he's fighting that rival biker gang. Um, but just a seriously beautiful and cool uh, Bowie blade. This is uh, the blade that it, uh, was inspired by the Marine Raider, a Bowie knife, and has gone on to inspire other knives like the Cold Steel Wild West Bowie and... Uh, uh, you name it, that Western-style Bowie here is very, very popular. And the W49 is uh, really the one that codified it, that hooked handle. Um, but this one here I love because uh, it seems like uh, this didn't see wartime. It seems like it saw like gang rival time or something. I don't know. To me, this was on the side of a Harley Davidson riding down the highway somewhere in Ohio, ready for action, the bad kind. All right, last up, uh, you knew what it was going to be. You knew it from the start because you saw it here. Um, the Grail of Grails. Uh, here it is, the U.S. 1918 trench knife, the one that was replaced with the M3 and then the K-Bar after it. Uh, due to the serious uh, requirements for materials to cast these bronze spiked knuckle dusters. So here it is. This was a knife that my brother and I wanted since we were very, very young and saw it maybe first on Rat Patrol or one of those TV shows or, or maybe the Big Red One or one, some war movie. And then we saw it in our diagrams group weapons book that we would pour over constantly. And uh, he found this and got it from me. That shows you what a, an amazing brother he is because uh, a... He works hard and could afford it. And B, he gave it to me, his little brother. So my gosh, thank you, Vito. I love this thing. Look at the points on this. I was just uh, last night as I was prepping the show, I was really looking at this and imagining just getting hit with this once in the face would just be a, a horrible, horrible experience. And that's what this is for. This is for trench warfare, for hand-to-hand -hand killing of the enemy as brutally and efficiently as possible so double edged blade super heavy handle um with those points is just as nasty as it gets uh on a knife and and as cool as it gets for an historical american knife as far as i'm concerned and i would uh, bet dollars to donuts as far as my brother vic is concerned so thank you Vito, for all of these cool knives and thank you for coming on this journey uh down the road of these awesome knives my brother has gotten me I am a uh, lucky man for many reasons, and that is one of them. Uh, be sure to join us tomorrow night for Thursday Night Knives and on Sunday for an awesome uh, uh, interview. These are the, the the heart and soul of the Knife Junkie podcast are these interviews with the people who make these awesome things we are so obsessed with. All right. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast